What's up, everybody? Happy um Tuesday. <laughs> I swear to God, I always forget like the day of the week. I'm, I'm I was about to say Wednesday is what I was about to say, but happy Tuesday, oh boy! You're having a great day so far. Um, so let me get into this. Sims Three GH review. Um, so let me just be clear about a few things. Cause somebody asked me this question yesterday in the comments. They said, what companies do Jerome Publications, Cassidy Industries, and ELQ own? So let me just clarify this. ELQ, they own numerous of companies. They really do. They own a lot of companies in my version of it. They own, they actually have a cosmetics company. They revived Coco Cosmetics. Um, you remember Lucy Coe's cosmetic company? Well, ELQ owns that company. So that's the cosmetics company company that they're reviving and that's the company that Jason and AJ and Michael are focusing on right now as part of the business they own a lot of different things um, Cassidy Industries they own General Hospital they own a bunch of clinics they own a drilling company they own a construction company they own a lot of shit um, Jerome Publications is a mass media company they own magazines, they own newspaper companies, they own a, a couple of TV networks, they own a couple of radio stations. It's all media, pretty much, basically. And Julian even has some stock in Facebook, Twitter, you know, anything media. He owns a lot of social media, you know, things. You know, he has his hand in a lot of things. He owns about 5% of Facebook stock. He owns about another 6% of Twitter stock. He owns a lot of things. It's mass media. Um, so anyway, let me get into this. So we start off. Um, Alexis just came home. She's waiting for Julian. He's still at the office. Um, she's trying to think of a way to apologize to him for her nasty ass comment yesterday. So Julian finally gets home. They start talking. She apologizes to Julian for the shit that she said to him. She didn't mean it. She, you know, tells him that it's been a long time since she's been married. So she has to get used to the married life again. Um, Cause her and Julian, they've only been married for the last five months. So she got to get used to being a wife again. You know, it's been a long time. Her last husband was Rick, and that was back in that was like eight years ago. So she has to like get used to that shit. You know, she divorced Rick like what eight years ago. So she has to be used to being a wife again. So they make up and she tells Julian that they have to like pack their bags and be out by tomorrow because they have to be out of the house by tomorrow because the contractors are coming to knock some shit down, tear up some shit, you know, to start doing, you know, the renovations and stuff. So they gotta move into the Metro Court for a while. But he says, you know, they're going to get that done. So they go into the bedroom and have a little makeup sex. Um, so then we cut to Lucky. He comes home. And, um, mm, fucking throat hurt. So Lucky comes home. And him and Britt are talking. And Lucky comes up with the idea, you know, because they're supposed to be getting married next week. Lucky and, uh, Brit, Brit and Lucky are supposed to be getting married um, next Friday, but Lucky tells her since they already had the bachelor party, the bachelorette party, they got the marriage certificate, she has her dress, he got his tux, why wait until next week to get married when they can get married sooner? She, she wants to know how sooner, so Lucky tells her, let's get married in two days. She was shocked, she was like, two days, you know, how the fuck are you going to pull a wedding off in two days? But Lucky assured her they're going to get this shit done in two days. They, I'm excited um, to do this wedding. I actually have a whole thing planned for their wedding. Like, they're going to get married outside. They're going to get married in a park. I have everything set up. I have everything. The venue, the chairs, the arch, you know, the wedding arch, all of that. The wedding cake has been ordered. Everything is ready. So all they got to do is show up. They got to show up, say I do, and they are officially Mr. and Mrs. Lucky Spencer. So the wedding will be in two days, um, and I will be talking about that. Um, damn, I wish I could show y'all this, because this shit, like, it takes a lot of time and effort to do this shit. It really does. But for me, it don't really take that long. 
I'm a genius at The Sims 3. Like, trust me, I mastered this shit. And I can't wait for The Sims 4 to come out. So anyway, Britt is ecstatic. She gets on the phone immediately and calls Serena and Amanda on three-way to let them know that the wedding is in two days. So they got to spread the word and, you know, get the invitations and start getting shit ready. Um, Because there's a lot to do in two days, you know. They got to hire a DJ. They got to hire a singer. They got to hire a mixologist, bartender. Um, So they got to do all of that stuff. So they're happy, but Lucky told her for right now, let's worry about all that tomorrow and let's focus on us tonight. So they're just enjoying their evening, um, but there is a couple who's not enjoying their evening, Carly and Jax. As what happened yesterday, they had a major blow up because Jax is sick and tired of living across the street from Sonny and he wants to move. So he informed Carly that he plans on selling their house and moving into another house. Carly says, oh, hell no. They're not selling their house. That house costs them too much money. They put in too much money and work and effort into making that house their house. She doesn't want somebody else to scoop up and get her house. So Jax tells her that he talked to his real estate friend and they're officially putting a house up for market. Carly tells him, no, they're not. So now they're having this big argument. Carly tells him that she's the 50% owner of that mansion and she he needs her signature in order for them to sell the house. And she's not signing shit. She's not signing nothing. So now they're at a stalemate, basically. They're at a standstill. So Jax is fed up. Because he feels like Carly, as usual, he feels like she's choosing Sonny over him or their marriage. And she says it's completely, it's not even about Sonny. That she feels Jax is just making this about Sonny. But Jax tells her that he's Michael and Morgan's stepfather and they live across the street from Sonny's house. He's trying to protect all the kids, including Carly. He's trying to just protect the family. You know, he's in the midst of this mob war. He doesn't want somebody getting hurt. You know, he wants to protect them and he will do it by any means. And Carly tells him that she's done with this conversation. And he says that they're not done. So Carly just goes upstairs and tells. But before she goes, she tells Jax that he can sleep on the couch tonight. I was like, damn. Trouble in the Jax home as usual. Um. So anyway. Michael. He calls um, Serena and sees if she's up for having dinner tonight she says yeah he wants to have dinner with her at the metro court he says that he has something really important to ask serena hmm. that's what michael says he says he has something very important he wants to ask serena and they hang up and morgan is right behind michael and morgan is wondering what michael has to ask serena but michael tells him in due time morgan will find out so Morgan is thinking like other people are thinking. Is Michael about to propose? We shall find out. Um, Morgan has a date himself with Amanda. Um, he took her to the park to have like a picnic type dinner. Um, it was nice. It was really romantic. He had wine. He had a lot. You know, it was it was really nice. They just sat there, you know, eating, talking about their goals, what they want out of life, you know, how they were when they were kids and um, how their childhoods was. Um, and they're just looking up at the stars and just having a very romantic night. Romance is definitely in the air in Port Charles. Um, Emily and Nicholas are having a little romantic time themselves. They get a phone call from um, Lucky telling them that um, the wedding is in two days, so Nicholas is wondering how they're going to get married in two days, and he explains everything. And Nicholas tells Emily that they're going to Lucky and Britt's wedding in two days. Um, so they're ecstatic about it, about going. Um, so anyway, Tracy is upstairs or whatever at the quarter main mansion, and Carl gets a phone call from um, Faith, Faith Roscoe. Faith tells Carl that it's time to put their plans into motion. That she already succeeded at one of her goals. 
And now it's time to put their plan into motion about taking the LQ. They want that plan to come to fruition. So Carl tells her, how are they going to get ELQ? And Faith tells Carl that she has evidence against Jason that will force the Quartermains to sign over controlling interests of ELQ to them. And she will give him that information tomorrow. She'll give him that evidence tomorrow. So all hell is about to break loose. Speaking of the Quartermains, Jason and Sam, they put the kids to bed. And they are in the quarter main dining room having a lovely meal together. And they're just, you know, reflecting on how their lives have changed in the last 10 years or so and how different their lives are. And that Sam never thought that they would be at this point. And Jason, you know, he was just surprised that she was that they're at this point in their life. So, you know, they toast and they drink champagne and they decide to go upstairs and make love. Um, so Sonny is at home. Sonny gets a phone call from Sean telling Sean that there's a major problem with the organization. And Sonny wants to know what the hell is going on. So Sean tells him that they lost a couple of their territories, a couple of the Corinthos territories. And Sonny is livid. He is pissed. He demands that Sean finds out who the hell is trying to take his organization down and find out quick and he means quick because he's gonna make them pay so Brenda comes up behind him overhearing his conversation and Brenda is not too happy because Brenda is over this mob shit she really is she's tired of it and she's just you know going on and on about how she didn't sign up for this you know whining sign you know how she didn't sign up for this and Sonny told her you knew how I was when you chose to come back to Port Charles. And you knew how I was when you chose to marry me for a second time. So you knew how it was. And you chose to deal with that. Now when things are getting hot, you can't deal with it. And Brenda was so pissed that he even said that to her. So she storms upstairs and tells him that he'll be sleeping in the guest bedroom tonight. Sonny don't even care at this moment. I mean, he cares, but he don't. He got other things to focus on right now. He can't focus on all of this at one time. Like, he, he just can't. I don't know where the fuck these marriages are going, but it ain't looking good. Because these marriages are on shaky, on shaky ground. And speaking of shaky ground, Luke um, is in Switzerland. And he just has a thought about, you know, family and Laura. And he calls Laura, but, you know, she didn't pick up the phone. So he left her a voicemail letting her know that um, he's returning to Port Charles tomorrow. He'll be back in Port Charles by tomorrow. But the question is, is it too little too late? We shall find out. Um, so... Speaking of stupidity, Lulu, what is this trick up to now? So she goes home, and she's still talking to Dante about this house that she wants to buy for $200,000. She tells him that she's going to take out a second mortgage or a loan on the Hornet Star. And Dante tells her that if she takes out a loan on the Hornet Star, how are they going to pay the bank back $200,000? They can't afford it. That's what he's trying to tell Dizzy Lulu, but she doesn't care. She wants her house before somebody buys it because she feels it's the perfect house for them. And Dante, you know, because she wants another baby. And Dante's telling her that right now they need to focus on the son that they already have that took them so long to get. And Lulu understands that, she claims, but she still wants another baby. She still wants her house. And Dante just tells her, not right now. But it's like, the trick just don't want to listen. So now she's going to bed with an attitude. Lulu is so annoying. Um. So anyway, Michael, he meets up with Serena at the Metro Court. They're having dinner. And after dinner and dessert, they're drinking a little champagne. She's dying to know what is it that Michael has to ask her. So Michael pulls out a box, sits it on the table. She opens the box, and she was not expecting what the, was in that box. 
and it was a key. And she was wondering where was that key to. And Michael tells her smoothly that the key is a key to his heart. And it's a key to his apartment. He wants her to move in with him. And she was overjoyed. She was over the moon. And she gladly accepted. And she wants to move in with Michael. So Michael and Serena are moving in together. Um, so anyway, that's all that happened in this part for today. I hope all you had a great time watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope all of you have a great day. See you tomorrow. I'm out.